everybody! Last year, in 2019, we received or added quite a few new reptiles to our collection. Some of which we purchased from breeders and others we got as kind of an adoption type process, whether it was from uh, a rescue organization or just an animal that the previous owners couldn't keep anymore. So today we want to revisit all of those new additions from last year to show you how they're all doing. <music> We will not be covering the holdback snakes we have that we produced. Instead, we're just going to be focusing on the animals that we got from other people. Before we start, I would like to thank Lavoit for sponsoring today's video. As a reptile owner, I do a lot of cleaning. Thursdays are my cleaning day, and you would think the house gets cleaner as the day progresses, but that is definitely not the case. I spill aspen on the floor, dirt on the floor, Cheyenne contributes by throwing food on the floor, and so on. When vacuuming all the levels of our house, since our animals are pretty spread out, it was a hassle to unplug and replug our vacuum into like various outlets so it could reach where I needed to clean. But now we use the Lavoit cordless vacuum cleaner and we don't have to plug it in at all. Its battery lasts up to 40 minutes, which is plenty of time to get my job done. And yes, it is powerful enough to pick up all of my various animal related messes. When I'm done, I just hang it onto the wall mount to recharge, which takes about five hours. They made it with pet owners in mind and I think eco-conscious people as well because instead of disposable garbage bags, it uses a reusable chamber cup that you just empty, put back into place, and use again. You can get the Lavoit cordless vacuum on Amazon. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And we will actually be doing a giveaway on one of these vacuums, so you could get it for free. I will be putting more details on that at the end of this video. So thank you again to Lavoit for sponsoring today's video, and let's check out all of our 2019 editions. Let's start with Martha, who's just our normal ball python. Can you believe we've had her for like a year already? We got her, I think it was last January or February. She was our foster fail. We were fostering her for our local herpetological society. And then I realized how friendly she is. And I just had to adopt her so that I could use her in programs. And she joins me at so many programs, let me tell you. Kids absolutely love her and she is just so friendly and great at handling that I'm very glad that we adopted her. She's about 17 years old now and she uh, still has plenty of time with us. They can live into their 20s, sometimes even 30s or even 40. Like ball pythons can live quite a while so she's still, how'd you put it? 17 years young. That's it. Yeah, you're just a young girl. Well I'm gonna put her back and let's check out some of the other snakes in here that we got last year. All right, next we're going to look at our black-tailed Kribo. This is the female we got last year so that we can pair her with our adult male. Now I bet she's probably in this cave. Yep, there she is. Hi cutie. Here, I'm gonna pull her out. She's kind of wild still. Actually, she's do, oh, there we go. She's gonna move around a bunch. We gave her this big cave originally when we upgraded her bin because she got too big for her baby bin but she refused to use it. We put it on the warm end and the cold end and we tried everything and she keeps cramming herself into that smaller rock cave. So we figured we'd just take this one out because she doesn't want it yet. She's just not big enough, I guess. And she has the smaller cave instead. So anyway, this girl is growing fast as you can see. She was one that we did an unboxing video for when we first got her actually. But the black-tailed Kribo is of course named after its jet black tail, but it's overall a very pretty snake. It's got these like chocolate brown colors colored scales down the rest of its body, and I love her little pattern or her markings on her face. That's just beautiful too. But she is a, a wonderful eater, which Kribos are kind of known for being, so she is growing pretty quickly, and we hope to breed her with our adult male Exanthic Morph Black-Tailed Kribo named Loki. This is her future boyfriend. This is our Exanthic Morph Black-Tailed Kribo, and this is about how big she's gonna get. So like we said, she has a ton of growing to do. This is Loki. He's an awesome snake. He's in shed right now, so he's usually more like grayish color, honestly, or more of a grayish color. He kind of looks like a normal right now, honestly, with him being in shed, but he does look normally more gray. This girl is het exanthic, so she looks like the wild coloration of this species, but she carries the genetic potential to create exanthics with Loki in about two to three years. Yeah, she's got a lot of growing to do She stuff. does, she does. <laughs> it's funny how she like, there's every once in a while she'll stick her tongue out just partly. Really? Yeah. Yep. And tongue flick. 
<laughs> Underneath her is another newish snake, and we are raising her up as well. Inside of this bin is the female false water cobra we bought to pair up with the adult male that we have. She's not as friendly, she's kind of skittish compared to our other false water cobra, so let's hope she doesn't tag me again. She did that last week. Did she really? Yeah. Wow. She's got a bioactive tub set. She up. does. I feel springtails on my hand. Look at you. You are beautiful. Aren't you? You are so pretty. It's okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. You're good. You're good. Don't look at me like that, please. Okay. I think we're gonna be all right. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a an adult male that's breeding size, ready to go. We used to have a huge, very old female false water cobra, but she did unfortunately pass away last year. And we knew she was too old to breed anyway. We just kind of had her as part of our family, like a retirement home type thing, because we got her when she was very old too. But we sadly no longer have her. But now we are raising we up- took her to the vet. Yeah, we brought her to the vet and tried yeah. antibiotics and... Well, even after she passed, we took her to make sure there wasn't anything wrong and the vet basically said it looks yeah. like old age to her. Yeah, it was, it was really disappointing, but we knew it was coming based on how old she was. And now we get to focus on our little female that we're raising out. This is a large species of colubrid, so she will probably get to around seven, maybe even eight feet long as an adult. So she also has a lot of growing to do. And these have that cool ability to hood up around their head when they feel a bit threatened. And that is to mimic the true water cobra like they would in the wild in South America where they live. One thing I love about this species is the mask they have around their eyes and they have this cool like black chevron right behind their head. I don't want to irritate her too much because I don't want her to bite me. I love their chins. Oh with the spots? Mm -hmm. Yeah the spots under their chin are so cool. Yeah. Here's the male false water cobra we're gonna pair with her. He's super hooded up right now because he's confused because we just took him out of his enclosure. But yep this is Roger. Now her bin, which Ed is grabbing or attempting to grab right now, nice. This one is bioactive. So in her substrate, we have a ton of springtails jumping around as well as isopods, which are, uh, they're probably buried right now, right but, the water, but yeah. Oh yeah, they're, they're probably in there. So there's a bunch of isopods and springtails in here to kind of eat up the sh shed skin pieces that might be left behind or any feces. Now that doesn't mean I don't clean it at all. Every week I take out, you know, the main chunk of feces that I can find from the previous meal, but they kind of take care of the rest. So it's like a living ecosystem that she has for a bin. We're gonna set her back in here. As far as small, still baby snakes go, we have these crazy squirmy um, erythristic garter snakes that Ed purchased. And we have two albinos, one that's het albino. We did originally have two hets, although one of those just unfortunately never ate. It never seemed to thrive and it did pass away uh, unfortunately, but that does happen. It's not very uncommon, especially with garter snakes. I mean, that is why they have so many babies. But I'm just glad that we have three that seem to be doing really well. Now these three cuties are uh, eastern garter snakes. They're all erythristic, which means they're high red or they have a lot of red coloration to their scales. Although you can't see it very well as babies, but the two albinos here are really showing the reds, even as albinos, as they age. Like every shed, they're getting more and more vibrant of colors. Oh, that's adorable. Just wants to peek. What's going on? Yeah. Do you have food? I will eat if you put food in my mouth. These guys are eating worms and fish and chicken and uh, pinky mice. This big one is on now. They are pigs. They eat everything. We're going to put these guys back though because they have been a pain to corral in this uh, bin and I don't want them to fall. The last snake up in this room anyway that we got last year is the scaleless corn snake from Don Soderberg with South Mountain Reptiles. Let's see if we can take her out here. She loves her tube. She absolutely loves her tube. Will not leave this thing. She is on the verge of being upgraded actually. So she's gonna move out of this bin here pretty soon. So this girl is scaleless, completely scaleless. Scaleless. She's really nice, except for her belly scales, of course, which all colubrids or scaleless corn snakes anyway seem to still have. She's also a reverse Okatee albino mutation, so she's got a lot of cool genetics going for her. We are on the lookout for a compatible male to breed with her in the future, but in the meantime, we're just kind of raising her up because she's just truly an incredible animal. South Mountain Reptile yeah, right there. Look at that. That's your breeder, girl. We decided to name her Sunny Side Up because you guys had some amazing ideas and that one was our favorite. So I can't remember who suggested that, but if it was you, you named the snake. She is officially Sunny Side Up because it looks like she has little eggs down her back. <laughs> 
All right, we are now in the quarantine room. This entire rack is dedicated to our animals that are in quarantine, so pretty much everything in here is something we got back in 2019. Uh, a lot of these are, since it's quarantine, they are smaller bins than what we would recommend, like as a permanent environment for that snake, but their, their quarantine is just about up, which is conveniently right about at when we'll be moving them to the facility. So timing-wise, this works out well. In this first bin, we have the Stillwater Hypo Bull Snake Male that we got from the October Tinley Show. Now, the Stillwater Hypo is more of like a pattern morph than a color morph. For Stillwater, basically they have the dark outlines to a lot of their spots near their head end and near their tail. So he's got those beautiful outlines up here as well as back there and in the middle is kind of more of a brown coloration overall. So I think he's gonna pair very nicely with our two ready-to-breed Stillwater females that are currently in brumation. Next we have the, uh, this one is the Conda albino male hognose snake we also got from Tinley. We got three snakes from the last Tinley. This is number two. This one, like I said, is a Conda, which means it has a reduced pattern down its back. It also has a pretty solid colored belly. There are some speckles there, but not a whole lot. The overall uh, pink coloration and red eyes is from it also being an, al an albino. We got him at the last Tinley because we wanted uh, albino back in our male hognoses again. And this guy was also a condomorph, which was another thing we wanted, was another co-dominant trait so that this will pass on to his offspring. Now we won't be using him as a breeder this year in 2020. He's quite a bit too small still. Instead, we'll be using him in 2021 most likely. He's an all right eater. I mean, he's a male hognose snake. He probably eats two out of every three weeks, which honestly, for right now in the winter, isn't that bad. It could be much worse. Next to the albino conda is another hognose snake, another male hognose snake that we do have a specific breeding plan for. Another ma uh, albino too. Another male albino hognose snake. This one does not have the condomorph though. As you can see, he still has all of those spots on his body that doesn't have a reduced pattern at all. Although he's actually kind of a lighter color albino, which is really pretty. This one is Het Sable, because we are going to breed him, well, we the were going to breed original him. plan was to breed him with a female sable, which I'll talk about more later. There's an issue that arose from that snake. Anyway, this guy is a beautiful albino hog nose that is 100% het sable. So he is, uh, he's got some really good genetics to him. Like the sable is a cool morph when mixed with albino. We're just kind of waiting for him to grow up. He also will not be breeder size by this year or this breeding season. We'll definitely have to wait till 2021. I bet he'll be big enough for it. This one and the previous hog nose snake both came from JMG reptiles. So shout out to JMG. We've really had good, a good experience with our hognose snakes from you. Next, we have our pair of Kukri's snakes. I'm just gonna take out one because the other one is a pretty bad eater. I'm having some difficulties with him, so I don't wanna stress him out more than I have to, but this one's a good eater, so I'll take him out to show you. He's probably in his tube. Yep, there he is. He's just <laughs> in his tube. <laughs> What's going on? He also loves this tube. Yeah. Aww. So cute. And look at that little face. Cute. Here's our little kukri snake. Oh my gosh, he's just adorable. Kukri. Kukri. Well, yeah, I guess I said I blended kukri and snake, so it sounded like yeah. kukri. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Kukri snake, yes. <laughs> so we actually had a mistake in our unboxing video of these. I was under the impression, or both of us were, that this was a rear fanged venomous snake, or like a mildly venomous snake, but that is not the case. They are not even mildly venomous, or um, they don't have a Duvernoy's gland or anything. Instead, they just have really big teeth in the back of their mouth. And the other one that's a not so good eater has actually bit me a couple times with them, and my goodness for a little snake their big teeth do a lot of damage that hurt so I'm gonna work with these guys when he starts eating better so that they are handleable as adults I guess it makes sense they go after eggs that's so why true. would they need venom yeah that's true Super yeah Wikipedia that's why you double check uh, sources yeah I guess don't trust all the sources that you read online I should have looked at multiple sources on the Duvernoy's gland part oh well we're clearing it up now they're yes. not venomous that was our mistake they are not mildly venomous at all they just have unique teeth yes this guy is eating pinkies for us pretty well this is a pretty good eater he's also super pretty Oh yeah. Their colors are so cool. I love the yellow and black rings. Yeah. And the mask on his face. Mm-hmm. Okay, second row. 
we have the two fancy morph hognose snakes that we recently got. Oh, hello. Wow, you pooped like within the last 10 minutes because I just checked your bin. This girl is the lavender morph and she loves to eat and she will try to eat fingers too, so, <laughs> which is a good thing. It's good to have a hognose that really likes to eat. I just yeah. have to be careful. And this one's actually a female too. So this is the lavender female hognose snake that we recently got. She is gorgeous, like on camera, I'm sure. Can you see? I mean, you can tell she's like violet in color, but it's okay. not as clear as... Not as pretty as this? Not as pretty. I mean, it's close. It's very, very okay. close, but okay. it's like a little washed out, unfortunately. Gotcha. Well, she, this is a stunning snake. Like I didn't know how much I liked the lavender morph until I saw her in person, because she's just so pretty. Do they have a purple belly? Uh, y yes. Kind of, okay. a, kind of a purple belly. Purplish belly? Yeah. Kind of, yeah, it looks dark on here, but it is a... Okay. It is a that's a bit purple Deep too. Deep purple color. Mm-hmm. With her being as good of an eater as she is, she should grow up pretty quickly and she's close to breeding, nah, a year away. I'd yeah. say a year away. Yeah, 2021 will probably be breeding her, but definitely not this year. So I'm just gonna clean out her bin quick cause that's a, that was quite the poop and it was bothering me. Okay. So next to the lavender, at the same time we got her, we also got what we were told to be a female sable morph which is why we got that albino head sable to pair with her. Well, the only problem is we think it's a boy. We think this is another boy. So that means we have two and that ruins our plan to create sables and sunbursts, which is the combination of sable and albino, which is why we got this guy that's albino head sable so we could create sunbursts in the future. But this is a boy too. So we were kind of bummed, but it's not the end of the world. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Is this a boy? Breeders who are watching this, can you verify? Nope. Are we gonna probe? We're gonna probe her on camera. Okay. Him, her, hmm. choose your weapon. Oh no. All right, let's probe them and we'll know once that and one? for all. I think this one. Okay. okay, impromptu probing, I guess. Well, let's do this here. You hold him, her, him. It. I'll hope for her. Yeah, it went down like three scales. So that could be a girl. I'll try the other side again. Definitely doesn't look like one. Never mind. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah. I think it probed a girl. It probed a girl, but we'll double check with like Jeff. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll have Jeff probe her. All right, so maybe still a girl. Could possibly still be a girl, or I'm just not getting into the pocket. But I tried both sides, and it went down only like three scales. You might be a girl. We'll hope. We'll Fingers see. crossed. <laughs> Okay, in the next bin, we have the future um, male or future mate to the lavender female. This is a very sassy conda phase that's oh. het lavender. He, oh my goodness, calm down, dude. It's okay. You're just flipping out. I'm so mad at the world. He's got really weird pattern down his back. He does. It's kind of all faded. Well, it's, it's really cool. Oh, dude. Okay, just come here. We are so angry. Oh my goodness, we flipped <laughs> over. We're so angry. He was pretty thin when we first got him. He, I don't know if he was a picky eater or what, but he is eating pretty regularly on very small pinkies for us now. So hopefully now uh, that he's a good weight, he starts growing in the future. And then maybe by 2021, when that female's ready as well, we could breed lavenders. Mm -hmm. Very sassy lavenders. Yeah. So I should probably mention that males don't have to be nearly as big as females in order to breed. They just have one job to do and that's it. Whereas females need to be large enough to carry eggs successfully, basically, yeah. without it being too harsh on their body. Seen like two foot females being impregnated by something about his size. Yeah, it's pretty like, much. How in the world? I've heard of a 40 gram male breeding before. <sighs> That is so little. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he does. He still has to be bigger than this, but yes. he doesn't have to be very big in order to yeah. breed. If you're looking to breed, you should probably find the female first, especially if you're going for babies, because females need usually an extra year before the males. So you can get a female, have her for about a year, then find your male. Mm-hmm. Yeah, give her a little bit of a head start on growth. Mm -hmm. Next is a snake that I think a lot of you have enjoyed meeting. This is... Mad Noai Moody is the name we landed on. He is the eyeless Brazilian rainbow boa that we recently adopted. Hey buddy, what's going on? He says, did you see him whip his head around? Yeah, he's like, oh, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Yeah, something's happening. Or smell you, give me food. You can see, I think, can you see it on camera, that isopod? Right here oh, yeah. <laughs> is a little isopod. He has a bioactive bin just for quarantine because it's a tropical species. We wanted to set it up different than most of our quarantine bins, especially since he's blind. We just wanted to fully set up like we normally would for him. Mad Noai Moody is doing very well. He uh, hopefully will start eating on his own completely. He's smelling me like I'm food. 
I'm not the food. I wish you'd look at food, like actual food that way though. You seem really interested in my hand right there. But uh, it's- I figure what you are. Yeah, I guess. I can't wait to see what he looks like as a full grown adult. Yeah. And he's gotten really beefy now and now he's starting to grow and hopefully you will take off here soon. But it just goes to show that if a snake is born without eyes, they can still thrive. Next, uh, we, I had to go down and get her, but the next bin, we have our Daisy Peltus Ganzi, or the African egg eating snake. Her name is Traveler. She was sent to us by a fan who just was unable to keep her anymore. And she is doing wonderfully. She is probably the best eating egg eating snake we have right now. She eats not only quail eggs like our other egg eaters do, she, also eats chicken eggs. I've never had an egg eater eat chicken eggs before, but she actually takes them, which is incredible. She is nice and big, and she's just been doing really well for us. She's still in quarantine, but she's getting close to the end of that quarantine period, so she will also be on display in a nice, big, naturalistic enclosure, which we are definitely looking forward to. We recently used her in a video about scale types, and she just wouldn't stop rubbing her scales together when we were trying to film the texture of her scales, which made you very difficult to film girl, but it still kind of showed off her defense mechanism pretty well. And last up here in quarantine are our two new baby Burmese pythons. I love berms. They are like one of my favorite snakes. We have a normal or wild type coloration here, and we have an albino het granite morph right here. Both girls, they were both the same size when we first got them. And this just goes to show what a good appetite versus a finicky appetite will do to a snake when it's growing. She only eats live rat pups, which is super difficult, but we are working on her with that to try to get, I think she's getting close to eating frozen thawed. Yeah, we're close, aren't we? Yeah, we're very close. This is Shika, short for Boom Shika. That was the name her old owners gave her. They just couldn't keep her any longer, so we decided to adopt her from them. She was a wonderful addition and came at a perfect time too, because all I was using in my school programs when talking about the berms uh, invading the Everglades was all I had were albinos to teach with, and it's kind of hard to explain what they look like in the wild and how they can camouflage and why they're so hard to find in the wild uh, when you're using an albino. But by using her and the wild type coloration, you can totally see why these just disappear in the Everglades and they are very difficult to find. As you can see, Shika is in blue. Again, she's shedding like every three weeks it seems because of how, how well she's eating for us. Well, this completes the snakes that are up here in quarantine. So now we're gonna check out some new snakes we got that are downstairs. The one new snake down here, uh, she's, she is out of quarantine now. She's with all of our brewmating bull snakes, except her heat mat is turned on. Bottom three are all turned yeah, on. Yeah, these are all warmed. This is our albino Burmese python, albino um, granite Burmese python. Hi, Olive. Hi. She's also very food motivated. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna be careful taking you out. Yep, I'm not feeding you right now. Nope. Not feeding you. Okay. Didn't have a hook, so I had to use a, a lid. So here we go. So this is olive oil. She is the mate, future mate to Popeye, who is our male albino labyrinth mutation Burmese python. She is not quite breeding size yet, but she will be sooner than the little baby albino upstairs. So she is going to be the mother to the baby berms we produce in the future. She's probably two years away. One to two years away, mm. I would say. Depends yeah. How much you feed her? That's true. She's a great eater. She would eat every day if I let her. Yeah. But she's already a little bit fat, she, aren't you? She tries to eat her glass every time I come down here. She does. Yeah. She strikes at me too. <laughs> but she's very friendly when she's out of food mode, so that's nice. There. And since everybody's been asking, although we didn't get him in 2019, we got him in 2018. Let me show you how Peanut, our bull snake, is doing. You've never been very handleable, have you? Well, that's okay. Here, put up with it for a minute. This is Peanut. He is the massive bull snake that we have. He is old. That's why you can probably notice his body kind of has that slightly deflated look. And he's not super handleable. He never has been. We've only had him for about a year and a half. But since he's so old, we decided not to brewmate him because we're not sure how well he would take it. So really, we're just kind of feeding him and making sure he doesn't lose weight throughout the winter until it's breeding season with Brad, who is his girlfriend. And she is asleep, or should be asleep in brumation, in the bin behind me. The only issue we had with Peanut was that a few months ago, he started going on a hunger strike. He refused to eat everything and started losing a little bit of weight, not a ton, but a little bit, enough for us to offer him a live rat and he took it right away. So he right now only eats live rats for us, but he's at least eating something we figure and we keep offering frozen thawed first, but when he doesn't eat that, we offer him a live afterwards. Cause honestly at his age, 
We just want to give him whatever he wants to eat. So that's all of our new snakes downstairs. So let's head back upstairs. And the last new addition from 2019 would be our adorable little Decay's brown snakes. They are in just a very small container because they would be able to escape just about anything else we think. But even though it's a small container, it's still plenty of room for these little guys. We have four of them. There's, oh my gosh, there's all four. Wow. Look at that. What are the odds? Yeah. Cool, hi guys. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. I just fed him yesterday, otherwise I would feed him here on camera for you. They are eating earthworm chunks for us primarily, so we just dust them with calcium powder and then with a multivitamin. Don't escape. Nope, don't escape. You are so cute. These guys, oh my gosh, are the most adorable little snakes I think I've ever seen, and they are so much fun to raise. Why are there so many springtails in that water? Uh, the springtails love the water dish. They just hop around in it. They oh, don't know yeah. why. It's just right. just what they do. If you want to know what springtails look like, there you go. that's a whole colony of them sitting in the water for some weird reason. Yeah. Come here. Can I take you out? There. Oh, oh. They're so wiggly. One of the cool characteristics of a decays brown snake are the pairs of dots that run down their back. Like there's... Um, just two dots side by side that go all the way down. Although I think he's gonna be too wiggly for me to show you. And they become more defined as they age too. Oh, look at his little face. These guys are seriously so much fun to feed because their little mouths like open up and they take a chunk of worm. They're so polite. They only get to about 10 inches long, 10 to 12 inches long. So as babies, they're incredibly tiny and they're live bears too. I wonder if they were live bears. Mm-hmm. So whatever we move them into as adults, I'm assuming they can be cohabbed. Yep, they can be kept together. And we'd have to get the teeniest little mesh screen for the top of that. Cool. You know it's a small snake when you can use a shell as a hide. For all four of them. <laughs> yeah. Apparently we know what Emily's favorite snake is in this group. <laughs> in this video? In yeah. this video. <laughs> Look at him, he's like looking up at us and at you. They're so curious. Although I do hand feed them, so I think they're starting to learn. What? Oh, it was a nose of a... Oh, right here? Yeah. Yeah, there was a I face. I saw him come up, I'm like, what in the world? Is that a spoon or something? And then all of a sudden it just disappeared. Just a face. There's, oh, there's a face. There's a face. If you stare at him long enough, you can usually see all four faces staring at you. Yeah. So there you go, guys. I know a lot of you have been asking how the decays are doing, and they are doing very, very well. Come <laughs> Do you on. have food for me? I don't have food, but you'll still want to check me out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tiniest little snakes ever. You can see all four faces right now. Oh, oh, never mind, you can only see three faces. So we were editing the video and realized that we forgot a snake. Two snakes, actually. Same species, though, so I'm only going to hold one of them because one is a challenge enough to hold. So here is a second ending to this video. This is the actual last type of snake we got in 2019. This is our one of two Vietnamese blue beauty rat snakes. This is an old world rat snake, so they may look a little different than the rat snakes you're familiar with. Oh, now he's gonna get defensive. He was really movie before. Watch, he's just gonna follow my hand. Strike, pose it up. Oh yeah. So these I have to be kind of careful holding because they have huge attitudes. Oh, there goes his tail. Can you rattle it? Oh, <sighs> they have such a cool tail rattle. They rattle like a quarter of their body. We have a pair of these guys and we plan on having them on display at our facility. And since they're very good climbers, we're looking forward to giving them an environment that's not only naturalistic, but semi-arboreal too, with lots of climbing branches so they can just go all over the place. And I think they're really gonna like that. Now, they probably won't make a good program animal though because of their attitudes, but they're so cool. So now that we have the actual last snake uh, on in this film that we got in 2019, now it's time for the giveaway of a Lavoite cordless vacuum cleaner. If you win, you will get a brand new cordless vacuum, just like the one that we use, sent to you for free. And to enter, you just have to follow Snake Discovery on Twitter and find our most recent post or tweet of this vacuum. It's of a picture of our Lichianus gecko sitting on the vacuum. It's adorable. And all you have to do is retweet it to enter. This video will be posted on January 31st and you will have one week, so until February 6th, to enter. On February February 7th, we will randomly choose a winner and announce it on Twitter and contact the winner directly. As always, thank you to the Patreon backers for supporting this channel, and thank you to everybody who's watching today's video, and finally, thank you to our sponsor, Lavoit, with the cordless vacuum cleaner. Thank you so much for sponsoring today's episode. Let me know which animal in today's video was your favorite by commenting it below, and we'll see you next time. Sorry, I was looking down at him the entire time. Yeah, you were.
I was about to say, hey, Clint. I didn't realize you. Were, I didn't realize you were looking up at me. So let me redo that again. I thought you were looking at him the whole time. Nope. Oops. Really? Continued oops. But but we have this perfect thing. Oh hey, it's not a big deal because <laughs> final labyrinth, Burmation. Burmation. Oh my gosh. Burm. Let me try that again. <laughs> what? Ed's actually cleaning. What?